Excited to show this to you folks. This is a loader mounted hydraulic brush hog on a tiny little tractor. As you might be able to tell, it's a little dirty. I put it to work already. I had to test it out as soon as it came in, mainly because I was not convinced it was gonna work. This is, um, well, tractors in general have very, very low hydraulic flow, all right? And, you know, smaller tractors are the worst case scenario. So you're essentially looking at a worst case scenario right here uh, with a low flow hydraulic setup on a diverter system on this tractor, trying to operate this four foot wide brush hog, which is, well, if you're just asking me before I use this, I would've said it's impossible. So we're gonna show you this thing in action today. I think you're gonna be excited. Now, I will say, again, this is worst case scenario in my mind. It's the lowest, they're gonna tailor these motors based on the GPM on your tractor. They've got different sizes. They have different widths and everything else as well. Um, this being kind of the most extreme example on, on the bottom end of the spectrum, there were times when it didn't cut as well as I thought it would, but then it would go back to cutting just fine. And you know, you kind of listen to a, a cutter or anything that's spinning and you listen to see if it's spinning at full speed or if it's kind of bogging down or whatever else. And so I think you kind of, well, you'll see for yourself how this thing performs, but I, I've already cut some grasses with it, some brush and all that kind of thing. So I'll show you more of that today as well and how it works. Um, but I want you to, to visualize it with the fact that I'm using this in a, in, in that worst case scenario and that a lot of tractors that are bigger than this, like if I put one of these on my Kubota M4, it has a lot more hydraulic flow. It's gonna perform a lot better. Um, even something like the 2038R that I have, uh, you get to like a John Deere 3 Series, 4 Series, or similar in other brands as well, same kind of application. Now this is something that a lot of folks have wanted to see, have requested for a long time. Uh, just these cutters in general, not this particular brand. And you know what, I, I actually have had a, a couple of different folks reach out to me about this particular brand and rave about it, all right? Uh, they've, they've bought them, they've used them for themselves, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna talk to them. You know, they had reached out to me a while ago. I'm gonna talk to them, get one of these, try it out, see what I think. They sent one over to me, no cost, just so I could do so. No commitment to, to represent them, to sell them, anything else. And <laughs> I just thought it was such a unique product. And I think it's gonna be a good fit for the right folks, um, but there's trade-offs as well compared to using a PTO-powered three-point brush hog too. Now, so for me, using this up front is obviously a lot nicer than using something off the back of the tractor. When you can go forward, just face forward, no twisting and turning, that's a huge benefit in and of itself. Just easier to see where you're going. Having it mounted on a loader allows you to go up and down. You can tilt it back quite a bit. This doesn't go completely vertical, but you can really get a lot of that stuff that's up higher, like on trails or uh, fence lines and everywhere else that is uh, kind of has that growth coming over where normally you can only cut along the ground. This helps you tame the kind of the vertical space as well. So the flip side is there's no gauge wheels on here. And this is similar to like a, a skid steer mounted brush hog as well. There's no gauge wheels on, on those either. And so you can find yourself getting an inconsistent cut height as you're going up and down bumpy ground. It's kind of, you're trying to manage the loader height a little bit better. Whereas on a three point, the three point floats, right? There's it'll hydraulically lift up, but when you drop something back down, there's no down pressure forcing it down. So it has the ability to go up and down. You have a trailing gauge wheel on there too to help the whole machine stay above the ground um, and just kind of follow along the contour. So that is a difference with one of these, but you're using it differently, right? This is um, a three point brush hog. You kind of set it and go along. With one of these, you are, well, so far I've tended to take smaller bites and reposition, get more precise. Um, change my angle. You're just using it differently, I guess. And hopefully the video conveys that. Now the real way to drive implements, you know, is with the PTO on a tractor, not the hydraulic system. And you're gonna get a lot more um, horsepower, essentially, coming out of that rear PTO versus out of a hydraulic system driving a hydraulic motor, like what you see here. And, you know, you can easily run a four foot brush hog on this, no problem at all, five foot in some scenarios too. You're definitely not running a five foot one of these and four foot is really pushing it on the hydraulic motor on this brush hog. And so how you have to operate this is either with like your third function or a diverter or a rear remote where you're, you're pushing a lever or pushing a button and holding it so that that flow is going through this hydraulic circuit and making that motor do its thing. Whereas with the PTO, you push a button or pull a knob and it's just on, you don't have to worry about it. You can raise and lower the three point as you move along. With this, you're, you're trying to keep that motor going, but then if you have to raise and lower the loader, 
tilt or curl, something along those lines, you're either going to have a very reduced effect uh, because that hydraulic flow is getting split up to different circuits where it's gonna slow down the motor running the blades or you might not be able to do it at all. So again, I'm not here to sell you on this. I do think it's really cool. I do think it's gonna be the right solution for a lot of folks. It is more expensive than a traditional three-point brush hog. It doesn't come without its downsides like any tractor tool or anything in general. But I also think it's a question that folks are clamoring for information on. They wanna know what the options are, what's available. And so more or less, this is to show you what this thing is all about give you the information, give you the visual evidence of what it can and cannot do, and let you make your own decision. Now I do want to spend a little bit of time about safety, all right? And, and I'm gonna start hitting this topic more and more uh, on my channel. And you see the big sticker on here, stay back 200 feet. You know, just did a video recently about safety as well. And, and uh, one of the points we mentioned was a viewer that had sent in a note about a hunk of steel when he was brush hogging, went flying and hit uh, the, the grill guard or the brush guard or something on one of his UTVs and put a huge dent in it. And imagine that just hitting you, right? And so there's a reason those stickers are on there. And while 99.9% .9 of the time, nothing is gonna happen, it's gonna happen often enough where you wanna stay away. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. The other big thing that I, I think about with one of these loader mounted brush hogs is all the different angles. And if you're raising this thing way up here, you have the potential to put that cutting surface, you know, at your hood, at your face, anywhere else. So you have to really be aware as an operator on how to use one of these safely to make sure you're protecting yourself because you're, you're, you're within 200 feet, you're close range. The blade tip speed on these things would be 10, 15, 20,000 feet per minute or FPM. So these things send projectiles like bullets out of there if they whack something. Anyway. That's just some of the dangers. Always reference your manuals that are on this equipment too. You know, read your safety manual on the tractor, whatever attachment you're buying, that's important to do. But just some maybe over obvious things to state, but we're stating anyways. Now the questions that he asked me, or sort of I guess we went back and forth asking him, he asked me, number one, what tractor is it? You know, what's the GPM? So you can either, if you don't know the GPM, typically you can look that up online. It'll tell you the, the hydraulic GPM. Uh, two, what fittings? I'm going to be hooking it up to, right? And so I gave him that information as well. Um, three, what kind of connection? Skidster Quick Attach, John Deere Quick Attach. I think they can do Global, maybe Yanmar. I don't know. You'd want to reach out and ask them for sure. Um, and I think that was really it. You know, there's not a lot of other options on there. I did ask him about adding gauge wheels, and he said he definitely could look into it. I, you know, it's going to drive up the cost more. I don't know how beneficial it would be or not. You don't see them on skid steer brush hogs, so maybe you just don't need them i i don't know but um that's kind of the general stuff there you know a well-built piece of equipment this is a small business right they've been making these things for years though um, this isn't a brand new product they're just well that's kind of where channels like mine and just youtube in general come into play is you can market you know that's kind of our specialty is just getting eyeballs to take a look at this stuff and and uh find those products that folks would like to know about but just haven't stumbled upon this section of uh, trail that I'm putting in right now is connecting two fields, I guess, just um, and through a little narrow strip of woods that we have, and we're making walking trails out here along with all sorts of other stuff. And this is just one of the spots that needed to have some access from point A to point B in a more direct route. And so I'm gonna have to come back through here and clean this up with a rake and, I don't know, maybe something else. I'm not sure, we'll see how it goes. But blazing that trail was a pretty big, um, step one to get that done and, and it's going to be pretty easy to get it cleaned up now and make that usable and also you can't see it now back before the leaves were on there's an old junk pile back here with all sorts of scrap metal and all sorts of other junk and i do want to get that cleaned out as well so it gives me some better access to get to that point and uh, start tackling that project whenever the time comes now a question that i had question that uh, other folks have too is what about your hydraulic oil does the temperature get too hot I don't, I don't honestly have a good answer. Um, I know that these folks and a lot of folks have uh, sold a lot of loader mounted uh, brush hogs like this. A lot of them are smaller than this, but still the same concept applies. You'll see loader mounted 
post hole diggers as well that run off the hydraulics that um, I have not used either. So there's other attachments that do use uh, the hydraulics on a constant or near constant basis. You know, that's kind of the, the difference though with this tool and you're on and off the hydraulic motor a lot because if you want to change the angle like you'll see just all the bumps and everything else you got to adjust the angle on this thing to get a decent cut um, when you're on hilly and bumpy ground that's uneven and so you're not running that motor constantly you're, you're you're running it for a little bit then you're turning it off and then you're adjusting your angle and repositioning and then running it again so you know it's it's not at least so far for me using it completely constant all the time it's just kind of on and off on and off uh, double-edged sword there i mean that's you know sort of inefficient but that actually i found uh, mowing this trail was very conducive because you need to take your time you need to go slow um to you know there's there's a lot of wonky ground around here and to be safe you, you just gotta be aware of what's going on and so going slow like that the kind of the stopping repositioning and starting again helps force you to do that if you want to think about it that way um, max cut realistically i think for this on this setup was about an inch and that if you had like 10 one inch you know woody pieces of material you're trying to cut at one time probably not great but if you had just a few i think it could handle that you go much beyond that and i tried to there was a couple that were two two and a half maybe three inches max and it kind of hacks away at it but it's not really going to handle that kind of material um, does a lot br better at i would say light brush um, grasses all that kind of thing so have realistic expectations i do really like the fact that it's out front um, more gpms would be better i'm going to put it that way so if you're looking for more information on these brush hogs here we'll put the link down below we'll put it on our website so you can go right over to their website talk to them get more information get set up get a price for the right fit for you you can save five percent with code gwt you're going to order directly through them and they'll ship it right to you now if you're looking for something for the three-point hitch a more traditional pto powered brush hog well we sell those ourselves all right so go to goodworkstractors.com you'll see them from dirt dog you'll see them from rhino some great options out there. Actually, even have them from Ramy for UTVs and ATVs. Mount right on the front there too. Have a own, their own self-powered engine on there. Lots of solutions out there. So that's what we're all about. Showing you the stuff in action, giving you close-ups, good visuals so you can make better decisions. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see other tractor tools in action, make sure you check out the other 700 videos we've put out. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.